let's start at the bottom of the card here on Showtime. And there's a, it's a very interesting fight to kick off Showtime. OSP, Ovin St. Pru is back. He is fighting TJ Cook. Stevie, an interesting fight to start here. Why don't you go ahead and make your pick? I need to think about this one a bit. And it sounds like I'm breaking up again. So, Kev, do I need to restart? No, you're fine. Okay. You make your pick first, Kev. I mean, Peter. Okay. Well, OSP, for those who forget, he has, uh, he lost his last fight against uh, Jagard Musasi at Strike Force in December, um, via unanimous decision. But before that, he won his last eight fights. So, you know, he's probably going to be really pissed off coming into this fight. And I love these type of fighters who, after a loss, they're very hungry to get back in the winning way. TJ Cook, oh man, it's kind of bad when you look up, you do your research for TJ Cook and usually on Wikipedia, it takes you to his own Wikipedia page. They link directly to his Sherdog page. So that's not good. But, uh, you know, he's lost his last fight. He got beat by Trevor Smith at Strikeforce Challengers in November. But before that, he won his last five fights, uh, four of those five on the minor circuit. I'm going to go for um, OSP in this one, Stevie. But, um, you know, TJ Cook, he has a shot here. Yeah, he always has a shot because everybody always has a shot in every fight. But... If you ask me between the two of them who the more well-rounded fighter is and the one with more potential for the future, I would say OSP, and I think he'll probably bounce back here in a big way. All right, Kev, what about you? I'm going to go with OSP as well. All right, well, our next fight is the Mumba Sayers fighting Anthony Smith in the middleweight division. Um, This one's a little bit harder to pick. Lamumba Sayers, we last saw him beat Scott Smith, but then again, who hasn't beat Scott Smith in Strike Force? <laughs> I mean, hell, if I was in Strike Force, I'd probably pick Scott Smith as my first opponent. I'd probably get the W. Um, or you could get knocked out late in the third round when he makes his baby face comeback. Yeah, it's not going to happen. Uh, he is fighting Anthony Lionheart Smith, and Lionheart's won his last two fights. This is, uh, I'm not going to say Strike Force debut as he has two uh, fights on Strike Force Challengers, but this is his first fight on the main show. It's one of those picks where it's a coin flip, gun to my head. I'm going to go with Sayers. Stevie? Yeah, it is pretty much 50 50. And hey, since you mentioned TJ Cook linked directly to his Shore Dog page, so does Anthony Smith. So uh, that again is saying something about the undercard of the main card of this show, but. I, if I had to flip a coin, I think it would probably come up heads for Lamumba as well. All right, Kev? Uh, I'm going to go on the other side of this. I'm going to go with Anthony Smith just purely based on the experience. All right, well, the next one is one of those fights where I'm really going to pay close attention to as Tarek Safadine fights Hodger Bowling, or is it Roger Bowling, Stevie? No, that's Roger Bowling in this case. He's not oh, Brazilian. Geez. He's not Brazilian. <laughs> The one time I do it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I was still impressed you got Lumumba, so good on you for that. All right, well, Tarek Safadin, um, he's won his last two fights. Of course, one of those two was against Scott Smith. Roger Bowling, he's won his last two fights as well. Um, yeah, this is a, a fight of uh, two fighters, both hot right now. I'm just going to take Sarah... Tarek Safadine, based on experience. Um, although it is kind of interesting to read that, you know, Safadine, he took up karate at 16 and was inspired by Japanese comic books. Not many fighters can say that. No, it's definitely not your average fighter bio, which kind of makes him a more interesting guy because of it. You like these guys that are a little bit quirky and odd and not just, you know, I'll take anybody they put in front of me. I'm a fighter. I came to fight. Blah, blah, blah. We need characters. We need guys that were inspired by karate and Japanese comic books. That's, that's what keeps this sport interesting is the wackos and the nut jobs and the, and the geeks and the oddballs. You know, we, we need more of those. So I, I'll go with Tarek Safety just for that reason. And his nickname is Sponge. Yeah. That's a great nickname too. And, uh, really it's, you, you know, he's got the credentials and, uh, not saying that Roger Bowling is a bad guy because, you know, the only the 
two losses to Bobby Volker on his record are really the bad part of his record. But again, when you say overall experience, you have to look at Tarek Safadine as being your guy because he's fought in Dream, he's fought all around the world, and he's he's beaten some pretty impressive names for you know not having the longest record. It only goes back to 2007, but he's got wins over Brock Larson and Scott Smith, and those are quality wins. If you go further down, you mean? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm saying I'm gonna say Roger Bowling. His record is impressive too, beating uh, Seth Bozinski and Shamar Bailey. Yeah, so I mean, it's about even. I mean, a lot of these fights are really coin flips on this card, but mm-hmm. I, I'm just gonna go with Tarek Safadine. I just I like the guy, and that's that. Now Safadine fights out of Team Quest. Bowling fights out of Team Vision, and his nickname is Relentless. All right, Kev, who you got? Normally, I would go with Safadine on this one because of the experience factor, no doubt. But the the main issue I have with Safadine is his last several wins have all been by decisions. Meanwhile, Roger Bowling has been knocking people out. Yeah, he's he's taken a knockout or two himself, but he finishes fights. Safadine stays in there and he he grinds out wins. And if anything about Strike Force tells you anything. Um, they're not a promotion that puts on uh, fights where you can expect grind them out decisions most of the time. The, the Strike Force card, you can expect a knockout is coming for sure. So I'm going to go with Roger Bowling. The semi main event has Ronaldo Souza fighting Derek Brunson. This fight again is a coin flip. There's no real clear favorite. Uh, Souza, his last fight was a win against Bristol Marooned in March at Strike Force Tate versus Rousey. And before that, he got beat by Luke Rockhold for uh, in a title fight where he lost to the middleweight championship. So, you know, Souza, he had his comeback fight. He won that. So what do you do with him now? You put him up against Derek Brunson. Brunson, 9-1. and one. He just recently had his first professional loss to Kendall Grove in show fight, which I actually saw on the Fight Network up here in Canada. It was a very close fight, and it was a split decision. So I think Brunson is going to be a little bit angrier in this fight, and I'm going to pick him to win. Stevie? Well, I mean, he's a decent fighter. He's got a, a very even way of winning fights out of his 10 fights. Four by knockout, three by submission, two by decision. So he's a well-rounded guy, and he's got a good wrestling background from the University of North Carolina, Division II All-American. So, you know, I usually tend to favor guys who are strong wrestlers because they have the ability to control their opponent and not get controlled themselves. and. He's obviously not just relying on wrestling because he's got more finishes than decisions. So there's a lot of reasons to pick Derek Brunson, except that he's facing Jacare. And Jacare is a finisher, and he's a submission guy, and he's very experienced. And I'm not sure Derek Brunson has ever fought anybody at Jacare's level. So I got to go with Jacare here. All right, Kev, break the tie. Oh, Definitely going with Jacare Souza on this one. All right. Well, the main event is for the bantamweight title is Rowdy Round of Rousey fights Canada's own Sarah Kaufman. Stevie, we'll go with you on this one. Pick first. I have all the respect in the world for Sarah Kaufman. I think she's a tremendous fighter, great talent, great personality, great spokesman for women's MMA, great for mixed martial arts in general. I, I have nothing but praise for Sarah Kaufman, but she's going to lose. She's going to get armbarred in the first round, and she's going to lose. See, when it comes to Rousey, I know she's the face of women's MMA, and Dana White has speculated that she could be the first fighter, first woman fighter signed to the UFC. Kaufman is a great fighter. Um, I've been a fan of hers for years now. I just don't see her winning this fight, and it hurts me to say that. Uh, Rousey's just too hot right now, and although I will disagree, Stevie, I think this fight goes into the third round. What about you, Kev? Oh, man, this is, this is tough, because uh, on one hand, you've got Sarah Kaufman, former champion, and she has the experience. Um, very, very experienced fighter in there for especially for women's MMA on the other hand she's going against Ronda Rousey while she only has five fights under her belt she has completely demolished everybody she's come against including Misha Tate who 
to me, was pretty much the toughest woman in MMA besides Cyborg Santos. And, you know, it, I mean, it, it just really broke my heart. But I think the difference there in, in that fight is that Ronda Rousey got very good at the art of psyching out her opponent. I don't think she has that advantage against Sarah Kaufman at all. It's going to be really tough here. Um, I think Kaufman puts an end to the winning streak here. I, th- I think with her experience, uh, she doesn't get rattled and, uh, she, she can take fights to the distance. I, I think you give it to Sarah right here. I don't think Rousey's going to be tough. I just don't think that she's going to have enough experience to be able to put Kaufman down. 